to another episode of Tackle Fishing Adventures. Came out this morning for season three to show you guys that I'm not joking around. First bass of the day using Rapala. Join me because I'm going to be using the old traditional original Rapala or Rapala. Beautiful to start the day.
gonna stop real quick from the day and show you guys pretty much what I use when I go out fishing the banks, pretty much walking, doing all the exercises I can, and fishing all these ponds that are close to my uh, to my house. Uh, pretty much the the equipment that I use, I have posted it on Instagram and Facebook of the equipment that I use. But usually when I do my bank fishing, um, if I'm on foot, I like to I like to at least use two rods. I have my bait casting rod here, my Cyclone six gill, uh, six to one ratio, uh, reel with a creature feature rod seven medium heavy, which I love. I love medium heavy rods. I don't do anything else. I mean, for that Lake Okeechobee, definitely, definitely, my my opinion for that is. And I'm sure all pros and all anglers will tell you, you're definitely gonna need a thicker rod there. You're gonna need at least a good 7.4 and up. And and line obviously either braid or mono or or a uh, regular a regular line. You're gonna need really heavy line. There's big fish in that lake. I really enjoyed that lake, so I just want to mention to you guys, thank you very much for for liking and and, and following me on Instagram and and uh, YouTube. But anyway. Um, and make sure to follow guys so pretty much I like to carry my bait casting reel and rod because first off there's a lot of situations especially if you're bank fishing where you're dealing with a lot of a lot of uh, either deep water shallow water or maybe a mix of deep and shallow but you're easy with two rods especially a spinning and a bait caster with you it's easy and versatile for you to go ahead and just use whatever is needed for that situation I find that the bait caster, I'm using my worms, I'm using my uh, deep cranks, um, what else do I use? I can use jigs, anything that I'm working really bottom with, I'll be using my bait caster in this rod. Um, spinning rod, I like to use it for deep water also, but um, I typically use this more for longer casting lures that I want to get there real, real fast and work things real fast. So I would use my Rapala, which I'm using today, um, which I've already caught some fish on. And pretty much, I have a basic here. I have a star rod that I usually use for inshore saltwater fishing, but I used it today because I wanted something a little bit heavier. This is a, a six to six, uh, eight to 16 uh, pound line that you can put on this thing. And I find it to be not medium, but maybe a little bit like in the medium heavy side. I love that backbone that this rod gives. It's it's amazing. So uh, stay tuned, guys. I've got some more content for you guys. Hey guys. So just to let you know, pretty much what I'm using. Uh, again, one of my favorite baits, soft baits, the worm. Now the worm, I love using. I'm not gonna sit here and lie like other anglers and say I only use one and try to sell you a, a, a product. A cinco is a cinco for me. I mean, you've got your better ones, you've got your more cheaper, not really good ones, but I'm on a budget, so, and I'm sure everybody is on a budget. This is really not one of those that I would recommend. That's not, that for those who are on a budget, these are $7, $7.30 something cents for this bag. But let me tell you something, if you have the, if you have the money, it is so worth it. So these, I'm sure everybody has listened to Roland Martin and all these big legendary name, uh, Bass Pros talk about this, and he's one of them. Roland Martin is one of those guys that uh, love this, and his, and his son Scott that I watch almost all the time. Uh, you can't go wrong with this with this bait. You could use it weightless. You could use it uh, weightless with a weight, without a weight. Bass love it. It's addicting. It's one of my best, better baits to use. Is a Cinco. Okay, this is the watermelon, uh, black and red, five inch. You cannot go wrong with this, guys. So I'm going to show you pretty much what I do to set it up. Many people have a different way of doing it. I've always done this since since I was little. So I usually just use the regular Texas rig. You got your um, small, I got a three ounce weight here, and the uh, circle hook, which I showed you guys in the last video what I was using in Lake Okeechobee. Pretty much what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put that little hook right on the tip. All right, I put it into where I can't see the barb. And then I go ahead and I twist it so that the point of the hook comes out. And as that ha as that's happening, I grab the tip of that hook and then I pull, 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 pull. 
so you get to that little bend on the circle hook. When that happens, I tend to twist it. And as you twist it, it's going to normally go down and, and kind of blend in inside the, uh, inside the sinkhole. And then once that, you got the hook that's still exposed. And to make it weedless, like many worms that you use, um, that you want to do is put it weedless, is you want to go ahead and, and, and sink that hook right into that bait all the way to where it comes out to the other side. Once it comes out to the other side, you'll see that it's kind of even. If you can see here, it's kind of even right at the right at the tip of the skin of the worm right there and then what i like to do is i go ahead and you bring that you bring the body of it up a little bit okay and you bring it up and then you put it back back down on the hook itself on the tip of the hook itself so that right there makes it wheelless and you're dragging this on the bottom and you're not going to get caught with anything so that's the traditional way of doing it i mean i'm sure there's other ways that i'll eventually uh get used to using and because I'm, I'm learning different techniques different ways of using these worms but this is pretty much a simple way of using it and it catches huge fish hey guys so I just wanted to do a little recap of pretty much how I use the worm and what you're seeing now is what I was doing my retrieve this day um, literally casting it out letting it hit the bottom and then just bouncing as you see here so I'm leaving the second spot. I came here to this uh, public lake, and uh, wasn't really wasn't really that lucky. I gotta tell you. Um, the only problem with this lake is I, unfortunately, can't bring the kayak to this lake. But I'm sure with a kayak, I would have had a lot more luck, you know, fishing vertically from from the deep deeper part of the lake. But uh, and I have a dock that's actually extended out like about a good. 20 feet 25 feet and I, I'm sure that there's some big bass in there or some bass just hooked up in that spot it's 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 a part of the lake where they had like a water park an old water park and they closed it down so you know too bad I can't go fishing there but uh, been I've been to this lake a couple times there's big bass in here uh, I've lost a couple big ones um, but uh, need, needless to say we didn't have a good I didn't have a good uh, a time today so we're gonna try our next spot which I was thinking of going to the couple of canals systems streaming uh, right past my house and uh, see what I catch if not I'll end it I'll end the day but um I'm gonna try my top water lures there first time ever going there so guys stay tuned
Hey guys, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe if you loved the episode.